next day in Lake Success Shopping Center, New Hyde Park, New York, and 39 West Northfield Road, Livingston, New Jersey. This is W. New York. New York Times Youth Forum is on the air. Youth of today, voting citizens of tomorrow. The New York Times, in cooperation with the Dumont Broadcasting Corporation, takes pleasure in presenting its youth forums, in which students meet to exchange ideas on vital issues in the news. Today, the students will discuss, are trust territories becoming independent? Our adult guests, is Benjamin A. Cohen, UN Undersecretary for Trusteeship, Dorothy Gordon, founder of Youth Forums, and moderator of Forums for the Times, will direct the discussion. And now, here is Miss Gordon. Greetings, everybody. Today, our young panel of high school students coming from public, private, and parochial schools are going to tackle quite a question. How much are trust territories becoming independent, or are they becoming entirely independent? It's quite a question. We have our adult expert guest as usual, but before I introduce him, we'll ask the panel members to introduce themselves. Will you start? Jesse? My name is Jesse Auerbach. I come from Long Beach High School, Long Island. My name is Marion Leaf. I come from James Madison High School in Brooklyn. I am Carlos Arnaldo of Regis High School, New York City. I'm Marion Perlman from Evander Child High School, the Bronx. My name is Karyuk Jiri from Kenya, now a new school for social research. And Carlos, you come from the Philippines. That's right. And we have two Marions on the program so that we'll have to call one Marion Leaf and the other Marion Perlman. I hope I remember to do that so that we can identify you. Our guest comes to us from Chile. He's been with the United Nations since his very inception. In 1946, he became Assistant Secretary General for the Department of Public Information. And since January 1955, he has been Undersecretary for Trusteeship and Information from Non-Self-Governing Territories. He says that's the longest title that anybody has in the United Nations and that the whole subject is the longest and, and perhaps one of the most difficult subjects. It gives me great pleasure indeed to welcome one of our good friends of the forums, Dr. Benjamin A. Cohn of the Honorable Thank you. Now, Ben, you've been on the program, so we shan't waste another moment and start right away with the question, are trust territories becoming independent? Carlos? I'd say trust territories are becoming independent under a new concept of guidance of these countries. This, go ahead. You want to definish? Uh, well, go this, uh, ahead. Anything, it's yours. Go ahead. This concept is called the trusteeship system. It is a system whereby these countries, these non-self-governing territories, are committed to the care of another administering power to develop their political affairs, their economic affairs, social and educational affairs also. Would you, could you add to that, or is that about um, as good as it can be, Ben Cohen? Well, I would say it's quite a good definition, although more emphasis should be placed upon the fact that there is a commitment under the international trusteeship system to promote in every possible way the attainment of self-government or independence by these trust territories. Which brings us to our very question, are they becoming independent, Jesse? Well, I say no. I think in the very uh, operation of the trust system itself, there's a major fault. This fault is that the trusteeships are given over to colonial powers whose national interest would be to annex these trust territories and use them for their own wealth. I think that a solution to this would be to give these territories over to members of the Asian African bloc and that their national interest and natural interest would be to give these territories independence. You say the Asian African bloc Locked. because most of them are, are within those areas, yeah, areas. Uh, yes. geographically. Uh, Marion Lee. Well, actually, that isn't so. Because if you've been reading the newspaper, you would have noticed that Togoland's about to 
have a chance for independence with the Gold Coast in March 1957, I definitely think that's a step in the right direction. Um, uh, can you hold it? Uh, let's get these other young people on the other side. Uh, now, Marion Perlman. Well, it seems to me that the colonial, ter the colonial powers are perhaps the best people to run, administer these in the new trust nations because they've had experience before with their colonial powers. They know what to do, how to handle it, and they have the wealth to sponsor all kinds of development programs which the new nations of Asia and Africa don't have. Uh, now, let's get our friend from Ken Kenya, Jerry, in, uh, Jerry, is that right? Yes, I think the uh, <coughs> territories are becoming independent, but very, very slow. What I think should be would be that the United Nations should have a timetable of a target date instead of going to the Security Council debating when a state should become self-government. And I think they are coming independent, but there should be a tip table. You feel it's too slow? It's too slow. Uh, Dr. Cohn, this is within well, your Jerry, territory. Well, Jerry, there is a certain amount of uh, special pleading, let's say, what you have just said, because the problem whether a target date for independence should be set has been under consideration in the trusteeship council for several years. Now, the problem is this. You cannot establish the same target date for all territory. There's no question. The degree of their development, the manner in which their people are becoming used to the processes of self-government is different from territory to territory. So what the council has done is to establish what are called intermediate target dates in the economic, the social, and the educational fields, and to promote in this manner the more rapid coming of the day when independence or self-government will come to each of those territories. Which brings us to a very important question, and that is, who should decide when a nation should be, or a country should be given independence? Um, Carlos, yes. Well, first of all, uh, the administering territory should know when their, their, uh, the, rather, the administering authority should know when their trust territory is becoming independent through their own experiences. Secondly, the General Assembly has great influence in determining whether they are to become independent or not. And this is an impartial body which uh, does not take sides in this uh, affair, but uh, actually gives its recommendations and urges uh, whether it should become or should not become independent or self-governing. You feel then, Carlos, that it should come from an outside agency, an outside other country? I think it should be influenced by the, author uh, the administering authority through the will of the people, but influenced by the, uh, rather determined by an outside authority. Jesse? I think the people who know best are when the uh, trust territories in question should gain their independence are the people that live under the trust uh, system itself. And uh, by plebiscite, as in Togoland, they should determine their will for independence. And Marion Lee? Well, actually, you can't expect the people uneducated in modern ways to judge whether they're ready for independence. You have to take an educated people to decide whether they are un uneducated, un not really uncivilized, but uncivilized in the eyes of Westerners decide when these people are ready for self-determination. Oh, there's a look on Jerry's face. Come on, Jerry. Well, I was about to say that uh, by the words that you kid, I don't know what you mean, because a person can decide when he wants. It's not necessary to fight a person when he's hungry to go to a person and ask him, am I hungry? The person himself, he knows when he needs something to eat. And therefore, I think the people are very basic to judge when they want self-independent. Uh, Marion Perlman. Well, they seem definitely to want to decide for themselves. In the General Assembly the other day, the delegate from the Sudan said that he felt that even though his country had recently received its end independence, that they should have been allowed to become independent first and then to build themselves up second. He felt that they could do a better job. They all had a common purpose to work for, to build up their country and, as a newly independent state. Dr. Ben Cohn, you have just returned, as I know, from a trip through Africa. And you visited the trust territories, you also visited dependent peoples, colonial peoples, and so forth. What did you, what would you answer to that question? The procedure established under the Charter of the United Nations provides that to 
cancel a trusteeship agreement which has entrusted the administration of a given territory to one or more powers, it is necessary to reach first an understanding of the wishes of the people. So the popular will in each of the trust territories must be consulted, as we did recently in the case of Togoland and the British administration. Now, once the people are being consulted and the administering authority agrees that something should be done to move to a self-government or independence, the matter is considered in the trusteeship council first and then by the General Assembly. And if the General Assembly agrees, the trusteeship agreement can be declared no longer in effect and the people given their independence. That is the procedure. Well, that's the procedure, but, but the, the question I asked, and I'm going to go all the way back to Jesse, who at the very beginning of the program said that he felt that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you, all right, go ahead, you said There's a basic you. fault in the uh, carrying out of the trusteeship uh, yes, go ahead system and, itself. Yes, go ahead and tell us how you feel about this question. And it, when you have a colonial power, uh, over a trust, uh, trust territory, it's only natural they would try and annex it. As you have uh, in the, Fr the French Parliament itself determines the laws of French Cameroons and Togoland. Now, that, that is, I don't see any difference between a colony there. The only, uh, and I think it's not only in that country, it's in Niger uh, Tanganyika, is governed by many laws of Kenya. And you go right down the line of all 11 trust territories. What a panel, four hands following a rough, Carlos. Well, first of all, the, uh, the power of the administering authority is first of all checked by the uh, right of petition of the trust territory itself. Secondly, it is uh, also influenced by the recommendations, the uh, petitions, and the affairs which the, rather the uh, things that are said in the General Assembly. It is an impartial check on the administering, administering authority to make sure that they don't uh, abuse these uh, uh, trust territories as they have in the mandate system. Carlos, you come from the Philippines. That's right. Well, do you think that the Philippines would have not, uh, the Philippine people would not have progressed as quickly if they had not been under the United uh, States? Well, I think that the uh, Philippines paved the way for the trusteeship, actually, because it was the first country to become independent, uh, rather raised from the uh, state of almost primitiveness to a state of a modern government under the direction of the United States. And uh, I think that this country has paved the way for the trusteeship. Uh, Marion Leaf. Well, I was going to say something before. I feel that what good, do, what good does this in independence do to a country if they're going to be overtaken by a powerful nation? Is these, uh, Trust territories are not economically stable enough to stand up in a world uh, today where there are so many aggressive nations. I think they'd be overtaken in no time because of their vast resources. Marion Perlman? Well, the, um, the, the companies in the um, administering nations have bought interests in these trust territories. They, private enterprise as well as the government, do run the industry so that when the territory is declared independent, Although the nation itself moves out, the industry does not. It is still there and is still being built up. Um, look, Dr. Cohn, you just can't sit back there and relax that much. <laughs> just a minute, we're coming back to you in a minute, but I want to hear Jerry, and then you're, you're, you're in this now. Yeah, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Cohn a question uh, with references to what we had already discussed about the target gate, uh, date. He mentioned that uh, intermediate date will be preferable. I wonder what we can do with the United Nations Charter, Article 2, Paragraph 7 of the Charter, which is really concentrating on um, domestic jurisdictions. If we have to do that, do you think we should get away with that touch Charter? May I say that Section 7 of Article 2 does not apply to trust territories because the United Nations has the right of supervision over the government exercised by the administering authority. So Article 2, Section 7 does not apply. What does apply is this, that as Carlos said before, in the system of trusteeship there is not only the action of the local administering authority which must be reported 
to the trusteeship council, but the petitions sent in writing by the inhabitants, the petitions presented orally to the trusteeship council and to the fourth committee, and also reports of visiting missions, which go every three years to each trust territory. So the view that the United Nations gets of conditions in each territory is quite comprehensive. Uh, Jesse? I'd like to question uh, the authoritative, the, uh, how uh, much value are set upon these reports and how much they are heeded to. I'd like to take the situation in April 1955 in the French Cameroons, where there was a legislature and a constitutional convention elected, and where the members of this legislature were either imprisoned or exiled. Now, when you have a situation like that in trust territory, and the same colonial practices are carried out as had been in a, a period of colonial imperialism, what answer does the trust the system have to that? Well, I would like to say that about that matter we received over 30,000 communications or petitions. It so happened that shortly afterwards a visiting mission of the United Nations went there. It was available for anybody in the Cameroons to approach it and present any views they had. But uh, due to the fact that the French government, in the exercise of its administrative authority, had declared some of the political groups as illegal. They could not act as organized groups towards the visiting mission. But we certainly got thousands of petitions and communications, even from members and from the illegal political groups. So the United Nations was right there all the time. Uh, Jerry. Uh, and before we bring in questions from the audience, I think you should come into it because you did ask a question of Dr. Comey for, and I'm not so sure whether you felt you were answered. Uh, no, it was not clear because, uh, as he explained, the uh, United Nations is duty to supervise. In that, I include criticism, investigation, okay. and uh, sometimes discussion. Would it be therefore possible for the United Nations to have a uh, Biden decision, can we? The United Nations can only recommend, but the moral power of any recommendation arising out of an organ of the United Nations is such that it stands amount to an order. I've never seen yet a case in which an administering power has not carried out as much as the circumstances permit of every suggestion or recommendation made by the Trusteeship Council or by the General Assembly. What about the question of uh, Belgium Congo over uh, Odoradi? The Belgium Congo is not a trust territory. It's, it's an self-governing. And uh, our topic, I think, included too. And I said, well, yes, yes, it moves into that. It moves into colonialism. What the United ahead, Nations Jerry. can do in a case like that, when the uh, Belgium Congo did not uh, present the recommendation or report something like that? Which recommendations or reports do you have in mind? Yes, the I one asking that, uh, that uh, let's see, that a regulation forbidding the people to be out in the streets after a certain hour or to be in a different part of town. Is that the one? Yes, the one I'm referring to. The Turkish Council asked that it be eliminated, and I can tell you that the uh, practice is very rapidly coming to extinction. It's been very largely already done away with it. That would be domination of another people, wouldn't it? Well, there that. were certain police considerations that prevailed in the mind of the Belgian authorities, but the educational progress made and the better standards of living of the people are making it possible now to relax that sort of police surveillance or intervention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and, and uh, let's get our first question. Uh, my name is Donald Lewis. I attend Jamaica High School in Queens, New York. I'd like to ask the panel, would you say that colonies of the powers would stand a better chance of becoming independent if they were turned over to the United Nations? Oh, let's panel. This was addressed to you. All right, Jesse. I would say they would definitely stand a better chance of gaining independence if turned over to the Afro-Asian bloc of the United Nations, uh, and not to repeat the system we have under the trustee, not to repeat the fault we have under the trusteeship system. 
Well, what would you do with the Marshall Islands, for instance, which is under the uh, trusteeship of the United States? Am I right about that? Because you are you have been emphasizing the uh, Afro uh, Asian block. Asian bloc, yes. Those are named uh, strategic areas, and you also you know, it's a very complex question because, as you know, on Bikini Island you have the American atomic bomb tests. Yes. And I would say that's an entirely different matter. Um, would you? Dr. Well, I would like to say this. The Charter does provide and authorize for the establishment of a direct United Nations trust territory administered directly by the United Nations. But the problem is a very serious one. To administer a territory means, besides furnishing all the officials and the technicians, to contribute financially to the development of administration of the economy, schools, hospitals, etc. And as you all know, the United Nations has a very small budget and a very limited number of technical officials which are required in its normal work. So that is the reason why following the system established as an example in the mandate uh, system, the territories have been turned over to the administration of individual or of groups of states which have the experience, which have the resources, and have the willingness to undertake this job. Thank you. Um, Carlos, can you hold it a minute? Or sorry, sorry. Uh, let's get our question, then we'll come back to you. Yes. My name is Joan Durham. I go to the Braley School here in Manhattan, and I'd like to address my question to Dr. Cohn. I was wondering how many trust ter territories there are now, and how many have received independence and how many might expect to receive independence in the next year, we might say. Can you do that in half a minute? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right. We have 11 trust territories. We did start under the Charter of the United Nations with 11 trust territories. One of them, Togoland and the British administration, is to become independent within the next four months. The territory of Somaliland under the Italian administration is to become independent in December 1960. The territory of Western Samoa in the South Pacific, administered by New Zealand, is going to become self-governing in 1960. The others are all moving in the same direction. French Togoland has been given now a new political statute which represents considerable advance in the manner of uh, self-government. And uh, the Cameroons, will have to undertake a similar action when the Federation of Nigeria becomes independent because the, the British part of Cameroon is also tied up with Nigeria. I feel that there's a great deal of progress being made. Well, your question certainly was answered. Carlos, what did you want to say? I wanted to include in that Af Afro-Asian bloc that if these nations were uh, committed to their care, it would be a partial body. They would have no impartial check uh, by another, uh, by the General Assembly. They'd be uh, commandeering these countries into whatever they want. They'd have supreme power over these countries. And uh, I doubt very much whether they would move towards independence. May I make yes. a, a yes, long clarification yes. here? We've heard some of the members of the panel speaking of the independent participation that the General Assembly of the United Nations takes in the progress of these territories. In fact, the real body which deals with this matter is the Trusteeship Council. It is composed of equal number of representatives of administering powers and non-administering powers, and thus establishes a balance in the study, consideration, and recommendations pertaining to each territory. When those recommendations go to the General Assembly, I think the picture there changes somewhat, because if I may use an expression uh, which is mostly now employed uh, by people, the so-called anti-colonial membership is much more heavily represented in the General Assembly than the pro-colonial. Thank you. A question, please. My name is Norman Greenberg. I come from Long Island City High School in Astoria. I would like to direct my question to Dr. Benjamin A. Cohen. Uh, I believe that, uh, that these territories which are ruled over by the uh, colonial powers are not being fairly represented if they don't have an equal voice. Wouldn't it be fairer, in your opinion, 
to have a staff composed of a member from a colonial power, a member from a African-Asian bloc power, and a member from the country itself, represented and having equal voice and have them decide when a country is ready for independence. May I ask you, what do you mean to have a member of each of these three groups represented where? At the UN. At the UN, but in fact they are. You see, in the United Nations, the administrative power is represented. The people are represented at the Trusteeship Council by the uh, by the representatives of, let's say, the Afro-Haitian group, which are members of the council. And uh, the third group, the people themselves, are now getting greater representation because the delegations are bringing members of the people of each territory with more frequency to the debates of the United Nations. We, we can have one more question. Would you address it to the panel? All right, I'm Bob Hawkfield of Columbia Grammar School, Manhattan. I want to know if a trust company doesn't show any signs of being able to take care of itself in independence and has no will to be independent, will it remain as a trust company under a colonial power or become a, like a, a colony of this power? Oh, uh, it's all yours, Dr. Cowell. Oh, well, you say trust company, trust, uh, trust territory, <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yes. Well, there, has no, there is no other way really so far being found where the interests of the people inhabiting the trust territories, the interests of the administrative power, and the interests of the world at large can be safeguarded better than through the system established under the Charter of the United Nations. I, uh, just a minute, before we finish the program, uh, jury uh, wanted to know this. What should the United Nations or other nations do about helping the, uh, the uh, Kenya, now that they've turned away from the Mau Mau. Did you want to take this or did you want Dr. Cohn to take it? I would like to, Dr. Cohn, to take it. The question is this, uh, now, as I remember, you visited Kenya recently, and now we have the problem of the refugee, just like we have in Hungary or mm. the... It has the to. Port can you do it in 10 seconds? Yes, I would do it. What do you think United Nations can do? Uh, <laughs> Well, the United Nations can't do anything directly within Kenya, which is a non self governing territory. I'm afraid you'll have to stop right there because <laughs> our time is up. I'm so sorry. Thank you, all of you. I wish we'd had more time. And let, re let me remind the listening audience that uh, study outlines on today's topic are available. Write to the New York Times Youth Forums, New York, 36 New York, and you will be told in a minute what the program, uh, the next program, and the guest will be. This is Dorothy Gordon saying goodbye. On our next program, a high school panel will discuss Is the Bill of Rights Still a Vital Force? with John B. Oakes, member of the editorial board of the New York Times. Requests for study outlines on topics discussed for program tickets and your comments should be addressed to Youth Forums, New York Times, New York 36. Stay tuned for Sunday Playhouse next on Duma. Food Fair.